Hello everybody. In this uh, clip I want to quickly go through a few concepts when we are working out dilutions. And this is really important because very often when we work in a, a laboratory environment we are working with solutions of which we have simply to make solution, uh, dilutions. So what is it that we are usually dealing with? Let's envisage it like that. We have a stock solution. So here this stock solution would be uh, blue in color. Stock solution. And it is defined by a very high concentration. So this is a concentrated solution. Concentrated solution. And uh, the Concentration is defined by, let's write it down, concentration of this, and I denote it with subscript 1, C1 equals the number of moles in this solution, N1, divided by the volume of this stock solution, by V1. And this basically characterizes this stock solution. And now we want to make up a working solution. And this is the solution that we will use for our experiments, for example. So working solution. And of course, this solution needs to be more dilute than the stock solution. Like that. So what we do is we just simply take a, a little bit of this stock solution and add it to our dilutant. Dilutant. Uh, this is the stuff that we uh, use to dilute our stock solution. And then uh, it would uh, look a little bit like that. So we've got a little bit of our stock solution here and a lot of the dilutant here. And now this working sol solution, uh, the concentration of that, we can write as, in general, the concentration C2 equals the number of moles of our blue substance N2 divided by the volume V2, and the volume V2 is the entirety of our stock solution and the dilutant. So that's important that we recognize that. That is stock plus dilutant. And if you understand this concept, then you can use that for whatever dilutions you want to make, you want to think about. So, okay, now we've got this scheme. Now we need to think about how do we go from our stock solution here to the working solution here? How are we going to actually achieve this? And very often what we can use uh, is what is called a dilution factor. Dilution factor. And it's really important to understand that a dilution factor has no unit. It is really just simply a ratio. So for example, it could be more like an instruction. Make Uh, one in a hundred dilution. And this one in hundred, this would be our dilution factor. Basically says, take one part here, take one part of the stock solution and add it to the dilution. So let's do it like that. Take one part, and it's not specified, this part. This is sort of open to us how much we want to use. Take one part of the stock, uh, 
and add it to the dilutant. so that the end volume and that's important that the end volume is a total of 100 parts and there is a little bit of semantics in it because we need to be careful with it what it basically says is take one part and add it to x parts so that at the end 1 plus the x parts equals 100 parts. And of course this is very easy because we know that in order to achieve that, we would need 99 of the dilutant parts. So in this case, a 1 in 100 dilution means take 1 from the stock and add it to 99 parts of the dilutant, and then we get a total volume of 100. The situation would be different if we say, for example, take take one part, one part, and add it, add it to hundred parts of dilutant because what we then would have is we have one part of stock of stock plus hundred parts of dilutant and this would give us a total volume of hundred and one parts. So in this case the dilution factor would be dilution factor would be one to one hundred and one because it means one part in a total volume of hundred and one. So we need to be really really careful how the problem is actually phrased. Is it like this, then we add the two parts together and get the total volume. But if it is like in the previous example, we uh, have been fixed in terms of what our final volume would be, and uh, we would uh, use to we, we would need to take a different approach. Something that is incredibly helpful when we are working with solution is that we realize that the number of moles in this what we take out is exactly the same number of moles that we have then in our diluted solution. So what we can really write is N1, the number of moles in the stock solution that we have taken out, so that's the number of moles in here, equals the number of moles that we put in into our dilutant. Now what we can do is we can rearrange both equations that we have here. So we have N1 equals C1 times the volume of 1. And likewise for this one here we have N2 and we do exactly the same. We rearrange this equation. We have C2 times the volume, the total volume uh, that we put in our uh, stock solution. And with this equation here, we now get the really important equation C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. 
And that's a really useful equation that we can use. So if we know the concentration of our stock and the volume that we have used to take out here, we can easily calculate the concentration if we also have the volume of the working solution. And uh, in some more examples, I will go through these calculations and show you how this is done.